Ethical hacking, also known as penetration testing or white hat hacking, follows a structured approach to identify and address vulnerabilities in computer systems and networks. While every engagement is different, ethical hackers usually follow the same phases. These phases are called the five phases of ethical hacking. In this video, we will go over what the five phases of ethical hacking are, why do we use five phases, and we look at an example where we use the five phases. The five phases of ethical hacking is a loosely defined framework that is often used to give structure to ethical hacking. These phases help ethical hackers and penetration testers approach their target methodically which allows them to identify and exploit vulnerabilities in an efficient manner. Using these phases, the ethical hacker is able to cover the majority of the target environment. The five phases are Reconnaissance Scanning Gaining access Maintaining access and Covering tracks Some frameworks might use four or six phases. The phases are somewhat arbitrary and can vary on the source or specific methodology. That is why these phases are not set in stone and may differ between cybersecurity companies. The reason we use five phases instead of four or six is because the breakdown provides a logical flow for how ethical hacking activities usually unfold. It is large enough to cover all essential activities without being too detailed. Let's dive deeper into what these phases are. The reconnaissance phase is for gathering information about the target system or network. This phase is about passive information gathering, such as searching publicly available information on social media, the darknet, informational pages such as Shodan, and examining DNS records. We also use Google Foo to find information from the deep web. The goal of this phase is to collect as much information as possible to understand the target and identify possible entry points that we can use in the phases that come later. It's important, in this phase we do not interact with systems of the target. This is reserved for the following phases. In the scanning phase, we actively probe the target network and systems to discover open ports, services and vulnerabilities. Several tools and techniques are usually employed, such as port scanning, network mapping and vulnerability scanning. This phase is the first time that we directly try to connect to the target environment. This phase helps us identify potential weaknesses. By the end of this phase, we should know what software is used, both externally and internally. We should have an idea which social engineering attacks might be possible. In the gaining access phase, the ethical hacker attempts to get access to the target systems or network. We try to use the information that was obtained in the scanning phase. This is then used to exploit found vulnerabilities, perform social engineering attacks, or password cracking to gain access to the targeted systems or network. If we can't find any way of gaining access to the servers or the network, our adventure stops here. If we are able to get access, then we can move on to the next phase. Once access is gained, the ethical hacker's aim is to maintain access to compromised systems or networks. This phase involves bypassing security mechanisms, setting up backdoors or remote access tools with the goal of establishing persistent access. 
Once the permanent access has been set up, the ethical hacker can start to scan the internal network for other machines to compromise, such as the domain controller. If the ethical hacker finds that he's able to scan the internal network from here, the five phases start again from the beginning. Reconnaissance, scanning, gaining access and maintaining access. Once there are no more systems within the scope of the engagement or the ethical hacker has completed their objective, they move on to the next phase. In the last phase, the ethical hacker removes any traces of their activities from the target system or network. This includes deleting activity logs, changing and removing files, and restoring the system to its original state. The goal of this phase is to ensure that the ethical hacking activity remains undetected and that the system is returned to a state that it was before the engagement, leaving no evidence of the penetration testing activity behind. It's important to note that ethical hacking should always be performed with proper authorization and within the bounds of the law. Ethical hackers follow a strict ethical guideline, maintaining confidentiality and obtaining necessary permissions from the system or network owners before conducting any penetration testing activities. To learn more about ethics in cybersecurity and learn what is and is not ethical, you can click on the card in the top right and watch my video about ethics in cybersecurity. Let's look what it means to apply these phases in a hypothetical example scenario. Let's say we have in this scenario a small company network. This hypothetical company has some employees, an HR department and an IT department. This network has one server running that is reachable over the internet. Some employee computers, a file server and a domain controller. The owner of the company has hired us to perform a test on the environment to see if we can access their valuable corporate secrets. Since we are following the five phases, we first do the reconnaissance. During reconnaissance, we find some employee information and also one server that is connected to the internet. We obtain several email addresses and one IP address. By searching the password breach list, we found that several company email addresses were in the list. We did not find any more information on the internet, so we can move on to the next phase. During the scanning phase, we will scan the IP address that we found for open ports, vulnerabilities and services that are running. We found that the server is running a VPN server and a web server. In the gaining access phase, we try to use information that we got. We learned that none of the passwords we found worked on the VPN and that the web server is not vulnerable to any attack. In the agreements which we made with the company, we see that we are allowed to perform social engineering attacks. We create a campaign to social engineer the HR department and the employee email addresses that we have found. We tricked one of the employees and none of the HR employees into downloading and running the malware file that we have sent. We now have a foothold in the system and we have access to the internal network through the compromise system. On the employee computer, we create a backdoor that calls back to our servers. This is the maintaining access phase. Before we do this, we have gone back to reconnaissance and scanning phases and we found out what security software is present on the network and the computer. This allows us to tailor our backdoor to evade security. Jumping back in the chain is a common thing to do while ethical hacking. Each time we get access to another network, our scope changes and we have to restart the five phases based on the environment that we just got access to. While scanning the internal network, we see that the employee only has access to limited resources and that the network is segmented on the inside. Using the access we have, we see if we can compromise the computer in the HR network. Why specifically the HR network? 
it's because HR is able to add new users to the domain controller. Because of our reconnaissance while in the internal network, we know that the chat software that is used contains vulnerabilities. We get access to an HR computer by sending an image with a payload to one of the people in HR that the employee we compromise communicates with on a regular basis. To find this out, we have to monitor the actions of the employee. Once we get on the HR system, we start the five phases again. After discovering credentials and memory for the domain controller, we install our permanent access. Using the credentials we have obtained, we can enter a user that is able to access the file server. We can now connect to the file server and exfiltrate the files that prove to the owner of the company that we got access to the file server. This was an example of how an ethical hacker might use the five phases to ensure that he works methodically. While we have not gone into deep technical details on how to do this, it should give you as an aspiring ethical hacker an idea what steps are made to compromise a network during a red team engagement. If you learned anything in this video, please press the like button. It would really help us in the algorithm. Tell us in the comments what you've learned or any questions that you might have. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe for more cybersecurity content. Thank you for watching and hack ethically.